across the borders, former Burundian Defence Minister Cyril Ndairukie has been charged in court with plotting a coup against President Pierre Nkurunziza. Ndairukie appeared in the Supreme Court with 27 army generals and police officers. They are accused of being behind the failed plot to oust President Nkurunziza in May this year. As opposition to his bid for a third term grew, Mr. Ndairukie and the other accused told the judge they have been kept in isolation in inhumane conditions. As KTN's news editor Lilian Odera reports, the charges came as Kenyans and Burundians participated in a vigil here in Nairobi for the 87 people killed in Bujumbura on Friday. The explosive sounds of heavy weapons clouded the air in Burundi Friday as most Bujumbura residents remained locked indoors. The confrontation was between Burundi forces and rebels, locally known as Sindumunja, who attacked military bases across the capital. This was the result. The scenes in Bujumbura Saturday morning. Bodies littered the streets. The silence of the dead telling the tale of the night's mystery. The official body count was 87 from that assault. <laughs> and Bujumbura went into mourning. Residents claim some of the dead had been rounded up by the police during the day after house-to-house -house searches on Friday. As I was trying to close the door, I saw a bunch of policemen walking past. Then they spotted a bunch of men in the area and they asked them to stop. The men got scared and they started running and the policemen started opening fire. At that time, our son was trying to close the door and when the soldiers spotted him, they just shot him there and then. But the military have a different narrative. On the side of the enemy, 79 of them died. 49 have been captured, 97 arms seized and a lot of ammunition. On our side, we lost eight soldiers, four of them from the army and four from the police. 29 have been injured, nine soldiers and 11 police. And the world is reacting. In Nairobi, a group of Burundians and Kenyans held a vigil for the dead in Burundi. Figures indicate that over 300 people have been killed so far since April when President Kurunziza expressed intention to run for another term in office. This vigil is important um, in terms of solidarity with uh, our brothers and sisters in Burundi and to say that enough is enough. It doesn't have to get to a genocide, it shouldn't get to a genocide, and we don't have to label it a genocide um, for intervention to be done. This vigil today is to put impetus to our leaders, particularly, I believe, those of the East African community, to do something about the situation in Burundi. 80 people dying in the last weekend alone, more than 80 actually, uh, is unacceptable. On Friday, we saw a series of killings which we have investigated on the ground in Burundi, which look very much like extrajudicial executions. It's absolutely essential that there are investigations for this now. But moreover, it's important that the East African community, the leaders of East Africa and the African Union stand up and take action for their neighbours. It's essential that the mediation, that the different Burundian actors come to the table to try and resolve this escalating human rights crisis that's spiralling out of control. Meanwhile, Burundi plans to slash public spending by 16% next year and expects foreign aid to almost halve as relations with donors have soured during recent political turmoil according to a draft 2016 budget passed by the cabinet. It's upon Africans to speak about Burundi and we are hoping that our appeal today and our, our heartfelt prayers for Burundi are going to be felt by parent Kurunziza and he's going to do something about it because you can't start killing a citizen every single day. How many are you going to kill? And the fear is for the entire continent. Burundi is next to Rwanda and our biggest fear is that it's not going to be a slow genocide and by the time we wake up it's too late. Right now the killings are in their hundreds. It's going to go to their thousands and we need to stop the bleeding because the blood has been shed. Africa should come together and send a, a peacekeeping union. Just some simple thing. They haven't even done basic simple things. Earlier this week, the European Union, the biggest donor to Burundi, said it would partially suspend new aid due to government abuses in relation to rule of law, democratic principles and human rights in the nation of 10 million people. 
the EU had been due to disburse about 450 million euros to Burundi over half a decade until 2020, but the bloc said it would suspend all new support except for humanitarian causes and projects where the population directly benefits. Lilian Odera, KTN News.